All right, so this video is going to go over a couple points that I forgot to mention in my last video about sketching derivatives. I'm going to show a couple trends that are really important to pick up on um, and that are pretty intuitive. So first of all, let's look at a function like this, this cubic function up here that has a couple, couple humps in it. And um, the first thing that we should notice right away and that that's most important is that wherever this, the function is flat, the derivative has to be zero. That makes sense intuitively because whenever the, the function is flat, that means that its slope is zero, zero, and the derivative measures slope. So the slope has to be going through the origin at those points. See, it lines up with that. So I'm, get, I'm sketching the, the derivative and the function on the same axes. The other important point is to notice that whenever the function is increasing, like along this blue section, Whenever the function is increasing, what sign must the derivative be? Well, an increasing function means a positive slope. So what we can see is that it goes from 0, increases. Here's its fastest point right here in the middle. You've got the most steep, so it's going to be at, the derivative is going to be at its highest point, and then it levels back off. So it's, it must be doing something like that, where that blue, the blue in the function corresponds to the blue in the slope. Now, on either side, clearly the function is decreasing. Here it's decreasing as we go to the right, and here it's decreasing as x as we go to the right, or x increases, however you want to say it. So that must mean that the, func that the derivative is also getting uh, more and more negative. So it goes from 0, goes more and more negative as we go, and same here. Actually, it starts from very negative and gets more and more positive as it levels off. But you can see that a decreasing function corresponds with a negative slope even though in even though right here the right here the function is actually greater than 0 the derivative the function is greater than 0 the derivative is less than 0 and right here for this this section the function is greater than 0 but the derivative is less than 0 and right here the uh, the function crosses over into being negative and the derivative is just more and more negative although the two are not related um, up here you have the function being greater than zero and the derivative being greater than zero, but that's not necessary. Um, the, the final point before we do another example is to see that the original function was something of the form, you know, ax cubed. You've got a, a cubic function, two, two uh, humps in it, um, and, but when you take the derivative by applying the operator ddx, that's another way to think about taking the derivative, this is an operator this is an operator on that function. You get something where it's, you know, bx squared. So you've got, you went from a cubic, or a quartic function, or cubic function, sorry, that of the third power, and when we take the derivative, member with the power rule, you would drop that three down and decrease your power, and we got something that's squared. That, that should make sense based on the rules that we've gone over. So let's look at a, one more example, just to be sure. So one more page. Um, let's just draw some uh, another function, and this time we'll make it similar, but we'll have it go dip below the axis just to show that the function does not depend, that the sign of the derivative does not depend on the sign of the, uh, the original function. So, first of all, the easiest thing to do is to identify the, uh, the, the points where the derivative is zero which is where the original function is flat. So we've got that here, here, and here. So our derivative must pass across to the x-axis here, here, and here, where those points align. The next is go through and either pick increasing or decreasing, but pick either, or pick where the function is, let's do increasing. So I'll, I'll highlight those green. So here's where the function increases, right there and right there. So that means that the derivative um, must go here. Um, if you'll notice, this is the steepest point in this part, so the derivative must be highest here, so it does this. And this one just gets more and more positive, so it's doing something like, uh, like this, because the derivative is increasing. Now, if we highlight the parts where the function is decreasing, here and in between these two levels, we notice that this, the blue part here, corresponds to something like that because the steepest part of the derivative is the steepest, the lowest part of the, or the steepest part of the function, excuse me, is the lowest part of the derivative. And um, the, 
derivative here, if you'll notice, so here it's negative, 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 but here it is the most negative. So here it must be the most negative, way down here. And then it gradually levels off until you hit zero at that one point. And once again, you'll notice we went from ax to the fourth, sorry, let me black, ax to the fourth being our original function to bx cubed being our derivative. So once again, the power decreased. Should make sense. And we will do one other really quick just to show off an important point. If you have a function that does this, um, here you have, actually let me do that, just I'll make it a little more obvious. Here you have a function that levels off at some point in the middle. So you, you touch the origin on the derivative right there. However, you'll notice that if you were to highlight the parts of the function that were increasing, which I think corresponds to blue, I can't remember what we did on the last one, would be here, up until we hit there, and here. So the derivative touches zero, but it's positive the whole time, so the derivative does that. So even though we touched zero, the derivative was positive the whole time. This is called a saddle point. And eventually, what you'll be able to do is we're looking at the function and determining the derivative. What we can do is go backwards, take the derivative, and, and, look, and determine what the function looked like. And you'll notice that things like this will pop up often. Those will be saddle points, or wherever, it pa wherever the derivative passes through, you know that the function went from increasing to decreasing. And when it does this, you know it's doing that a lot, and the function must be some you know, power series or something like that. But uh, we'll get into that later. I just want to make this video to make those really important points about picking up those trends. So see you guys next time.